In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about filters in JAXRS. The best way to implement authentication in your JAXRS APIs is using filters. So we'll learn that feature of JAXRS first. Now, what is a filter? Filter is a way for you to take some of the cross-cutting concerns and cross-cutting logic out from your individual resource classes into a common filter class. The idea is if you have some logic, to be applied to different APIs and different resources, rather than make a copy of that logic in each of those resources, you take that logic out and create one common class which contains that logic, and then you apply it to different requests, right? So that's the concept of a filter. It's a cross-cutting concern that you isolate out into its own separate entity. So what you do is you create a filter which contains that cross-cutting logic and then you configure what are the API requests for which that filter needs to apply. An example is logging. Let's say you want to log all the API requests and responses and the times at which they were made. One way you could do it is make sure that logging statement is you know, coded in each and every resource class, which is a lot of duplication of work. What you could do instead is create a logging filter and have that do the logging. Now, when you create a JAXRS filter, JAXRS is sure to call that filter's logic when an API call is made. So that's how you isolate that logic out. I'm going to demonstrate the filter logic by creating a couple of filters in this tutorial. The first filter that I'm going to create is a powered by filter. You must have seen some software solutions that provide uh, a powered by tag to applications or websites. You see tags like powered by WordPress or powered by AngularJS or something like that. So I'm going to do something similar here. Uh, when there is a REST API call that's made, uh, the response that goes out should ideally have a header value which says powered by, and uh, the value should be Java Brains. So every response has a header powered by Java Brains. So I'm going to create this filter now. Instead of having this be a part of every uh, resource, I'm going to isolate this out as a filter. So I'm going to go ahead and create this new class in the REST package. I'm going to call this powered by response filter. OK, so for a class to be a filter, it needs to implement an interface that comes with JAXRS. Now, what interface you want to implement depends on what you want that filter to be. So it turns out there are two types of filters in JAXRS. One is a request filter, and one is a response filter. A request filter is a filter that executes before a request is served, and a response filter is a filter that's executed after the response is prepared and it's about to be sent to the client, right? So you're basically intercepting either the request or you're intercepting the response. So depending on whether you want your filter to be a request filter or a response filter, you gotta pick the right interface to implement. In the case of this powered by filter, I want the response to be changed, right? So in the response, I wanna add a header. So what I need here is a response filter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna implement an interface called container response filter. And let me import this and uh, add the unimplemented methods. Now you see here, I need to implement this filter method. Now the powered by response filter implements container response filter, so this is a response filter. The JAXRS framework is going to call this filter method implementation when the response is about to be sent, okay? Now here you have a chance to modify the response, you have a chance to add a header value. Now let's look at the parameters to this filter method. Again, the parameters depend on whether it's a request filter or a response filter. In the case of a request filter, the JAXRS framework sends an instance of a class called container request context. It's basically a context object, right? It's an object which contains details about the request. In the case of a response filter, though, you get two context objects. One is a request context, and one is a response context. Since the request filter happens before the request is processed, all you have is a request context. 
but the response filter is called after the response is prepared. So you have access to both the request context and the response context. So you can actually tweak and modify both. Uh, in our case, we are doing the powered by filter. So I'm gonna modify response using the response context. So what I'm gonna do is change these names. I'm gonna call them request context and response context. And now I'm gonna do a response context dot I need to get the header value, so I'm gonna say get headers dot add. I need to add this powered by header, so I'm gonna say x powered by as the key. And the value is Java Brains. Now the last thing I need to do is mark this as a provider. As with all the other things in JaxRS, marking this as a provider conveys that special functionality that this class has. So I'm gonna save and run this on Tomcat. And I'm gonna to switch to Postman, and make a REST API call to this endpoint. If I examine the headers, you see there is this extra header value X powered by Java brains. So this is a filter in action, right? So this is not something that we added in a resource class. This is a separate filter, so it's applicable to any REST API call that's made to an endpoint that this application serves. What's also interesting is if I make an API call to, to um, an endpoint that doesn't exist. For instance, I change this to error. I change, look at the header value here. Well, it still says, powered by Java Brains. So the filter is actually getting executed no matter what, whether it's a successful response or there's an error response, uh, the filter is guaranteed to execute, which is pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna do one more implementation of a filter. Uh, this is gonna be a logging filter. I wanna log, let's say, the header values for the request and the header value for the response. So I need both. I need to log the header values of a request when the request is made. And uh, before the response is sent back, I wanna log all the header values of the response. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this new class called uh, logging filter. Click finish. And now since I need to do both before and after, I can do this. I can actually do an implements, a container request filter to import this and uh, add the unimplemented methods. This, as we just saw, is a filter method which takes in just the request context. I'm gonna change this to request context. And uh, let's print the request header value over here. I'm gonna say request context dot get headers. And uh, I'm just gonna do a sysout of this. All right, so with this, I am going to be printing the header values for every request that, that's made to this, to this application. You can see here the request headers are all being logged in the console. But now what I wanna do is also log the response headers. So I could of course create a separate filter for it, but since these are just interfaces, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also implement that uh, response filter interface. So I'm gonna say implements container response filter. And now if I add the unimplemented methods, I'm gonna get the method that we just saw. It's a filter method which takes in two arguments. One is the container request context, and the container response context. Now, both these methods happen to be in the same class, but since we have registered them as uh, a provider and an implementation of these two interfaces, JaxRS knows what method to call when, right? It's gonna call the first method for a request filter. Let me actually do a sysout request filter here, and uh, I'm gonna do a sysout response filter here to make sure that this is printed in the response. 
and I'm going to print out the response headers. Response context dot get headers. Now I make this call in Postman. If I switch to the console, well here you can see there is a request filter and the request headers, and we have the response filter, the response headers. So it's pretty cool. So this is how you implement filters in JAXRS. You can either do a request or a response, or like we've seen with the logging filter, you can do one filter which does both. It just has two methods, and the JAXRS framework knows which method to call when.